into Okay guys, so let's now proceed with the next topic, which is all about the thermal stresses or thermal deformation. Okay, so temperature changes causes the body to expand or contract. The amount of deformation due to change in temperature is given by the equation delta T or the deformation due to the temperature is equal to alpha multiplied by the quantity of the final temperature minus the initial temperature and multiply by L or the length. Okay, so siguro familiar na kayo dito sa equation na to. Kasi ito is nakita nyo na sa saan? Nakita na kayo nito sa inyong surveying. Correction due to the temperature. The same concept lang din naman yan. So sabi dito sa unang sentence natin, and the temperature changes causes the body to expand or contract. So kailan ba nag-expand o kailan ba nag contract ang isang body kapag nagkaroon ng change in temperature. So, parang ano lang yan. Parang baka lang yan. So, matigas yan. So, di ba? Kapag malamig, anong nangyayari? Di ba lumiliit yan or umuurong? And kapag mainit, yan ay hahaba. Hahaba siya or lalaylay ano so lalo na kapag suspended yan nakalawit so may tendency talaga na haba yan ano so kapag malamig yan ang mangyayari dyan lilit siya or uurong so ganun lang yun parang ano lang okay so ang formula natin is given by this equation so nasabi ko na nga anina kung saan yung alpha mo is the coefficient of the thermal expansion. So, ang unit niya is in meter per meter degree Celsius. So, itong meter per meter naman to, cancel na lang naman to. And then, degree Celsius. L is the length in uh, meter. So, but then again, this is not limited to meter. Depende sa units na ibibigay sa inyo. And for the temperature, so, kagaya ng mga unit in... Uh, distance, yung mga length so yung temperature mo, marami rin pwedeng unit, so we have degree Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin Rankine, so guys uh, paki recall na lang ng mga conversion nyo so malay nyo, lumabas sa exam, magkakaibang unit so i-convert nyo pa siya para masatisfy yung mga unit and bago mo siya ma-solve so, eto nagbigay siya ng mga values ng alpha, so for steel Alpha is equal to 11.25 times 10 to negative 6 per degree Celsius. And for aluminum, that is 23 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius. But this value may change depende sa situation. So, ibibigay naman sa problem sa inyo yung value. But kapag wala doon, uh, just memorize these values. So, pakiano na lang din ako, paki-research ng mga values ng alpha for, ito is steel, aluminum, bronze. So, pa-search ako nung para kay bronze. And, uh, yung normal o yung mga type ng metal na ginagamit natin for this subject. Okay, so an increase in temperature results in an expansion, whereas a temperature decrease produces contraction. So, yun nga, yun nga rin yung sinabi ko kanina. Okay, so let's proceed with the next slide. Okay, so this is an example of a situation na maaari nating ma-encounter dito sa topic na ito. So, merong adyang problem. So, A-rad is rigidly fixed between two walls. Okay? So that change or the deformation due to temperature so that is just equals to X plus the deformation due to the load P. So kung mapapansin nyo dito sa ating diagram, uh, 
Ang nangyari kasi dyan, so sa sunod na slide, ipa, i-discuss kung bakit ganito yung nangyari. But ang kwento kasi dyan, uh, aalsin mo yung isang support do sa kabilang dulo. And then hahayaan mo siyang humababa or umikli, depende sa temperature change. O pag uminit nga, hahaba yan, or kapag lumamig, iikli siya. Okay, so itong equation lang naman na to, ang pangahawakan natin. So... Para mas maunawaan, so i-discuss natin yung mga procedure for deriving compatibility equation for a thermal stress or thermal deformation. Okay, so what are the procedures? So for number one, the first thing that you need to do is to remove the constraints that prevent the thermal deformation to occur freely. This procedure is sometimes referred to as relaxing the supports. So, ang isang tawag pala dyan is yung relaxing the supports. Show the thermal deformation on a sketch using an exaggerated scale. So, kagaya do sa nauna, do sa ating actual deformation, mas maganda kapag ina-exaggerate mo yung iyong scale ng mga deformation. So, ang sabi nga dyan, relaxing the supports. So, gaya nga ng sabi ko kanina, Yung isang constraint o yung isang support dito, tatanggalin mo. Hahayaan mo siya maagalaw. Depende nga do sa change in temperature. Next. For number two, you need to apply the force that are necessary to restore the specified condition of constraint. Add the deformation caused by these forces to the sketch that was drawn in the previous step. Draw the magnitude of deformation so that they are computed with the geometric constraint. So, just like in this diagram, so nung tinanggal niya kasi yung isang support, so anong nangyari kasi dito, nagkaroon ka ng change in temperature which decreases. Ano? So, yung initial mo, anong nangyari? Mas lumamig yung final temperature. So, anong nangyari dito? Umurong yung rad mo. So, sinasabi doon sa step number 2, ang kailangan mo, ay maglagay ng force para muling maibalik sa original position yung iyong rad. So kung umurong yan, therefore, dapat meron ka ditong actual force na pull. O kailangan niyang higitin ulit para bumalik siya dito sa fixed support. Okay? So by inspection of the sketch, write the relationships between the thermal deformation and the deformation due to the constraint forces. So dito papasok yung equation na to. So because of that, Yung change in temperature mo, the deformation due to the temperature, which is delta T, so makikita nyo dito, ito siya, is equals to X plus delta T. Okay, so ano ba yung X? So yung X mo, meron kasi mga problem dyan na uh, lalapit yung wall mo. It's either lalapit o lalayo. Okay? So later on naman, um, magsosolve tayo ng problem na Alas ka pareho ng situation na ito, no? Para mas maunawaan nyo. Okay, so that ends our discussion. So let's try to solve some problems with regards to these thermal stresses. Okay guys, so let's start with our first problem for thermal deformation. So, basahin natin sabay-sabay. The horizontal steel rod, which is 2.5 meter long. Ito siya. 2.5 meter long. And having a cross-sectional area of 1,200 millimeter squared secured between two walls as shown. So this is rigidly fixed between these two walls. If the rod is stress-free at 20 degrees Celsius, so our initial temperature kapag zero stress ka is around 20 degrees Celsius. So compute the stress when the temperature has dropped to, 20, to negative 20 degrees Celsius. So, nagkaroon ka ng drop in temperature. Ano? So, siguro, nagkakaidi yan, eh? How will our horizontal steel rod react? 
So, pag drop in temperature, siya ay... Boys, ano nangyari pag malamig? Wow! So, tama. Tumiliit. So, umuurong. Okay, so... Assume that for case number one, the walls do not move. So, ibig sabihin, yung wall mo, dyan lang siya. Okay? And for number two, ito maganda. So, if the walls move together at a distance of 0.5 mm. So, ang mangyayari dyan, after the sadap, drop ng temperature mo, yung wall mo, lalapit siya ng 0.5 mm. Sabihin na natin itong nasa right side na wall. So, use alpha of the thermal coefficient as 11.7 times 10 raised to negative 6 per degree Celsius and the modulus of elasticity which is equivalent to 200 giga pascal. Okay guys, so ano nga yung nakasaad sa ating first step? So ang sabi, diba, hayaan mong maagalaw yung iyong rad doon sa magiging change in temperature. So ang gagawin natin guys, tatanggalin natin tong isang support. So ang tatanggalin ko na lang is yung nasa right side. Okay? So ano magiging itsura ng diagram natin? So this is your wall. Yung left wall mo. So lagyan lang natin ng shadow. Shadow ba yan? Okay, so ito yung iyong rod. Okay? So sabi, tanggalin mo yung isang support. So ayan na lang siya. Okay, so nung lumamig, anong nangyari? Umurong siya or umikli. So, say, gawin natin itong as your initial position and exage natin yung drawing. Ayan. So, this will be your final position. Lang natin. So, talaga tumuwed. So, yaan mo na. So, this is your initial position. So, denoted by IP. And this is your final. Ayan. Okay, so yung red mo, pupunta siya dito. Ano? Ayan. So, umikli nga siya eh. Buburahin lang natin ano, para maita na dumi talaga siya. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Kina yung pinakamalit na eric. Ayan. So, ito, nagkaroon ka ng thermal deformation. So, labelan lang natin. Palta natin ang kulay. So, this will be your thermal deformation. So, unahin natin isolve is yung case 1, ha. So this is the thermal deformation. Okay, next. So nung lumit siya, anong sabi do sa step number 2? Diba, ang sabi doon, kailangan mong i-apply yung load para bumalik siya doon sa original position niya. So ibig sabihin kung umurong to o umikli yung iyong rod, anong force ang kailangan kong i-apply sa kanya para bumalik siya ulit dito sa kanyang initial position? Ha? Yeah. So again, umikli siya ha. So ang kailangan nga sa step number 2, ano daw yung force na kailangan kong ilagay para bumalik siya ulit doon sa kanyang original na position or sa original location. Dapat mag-apply ka ng pulling force or tensile force doon sa ating sa ating rod. So, let's just say na ito. So, ibig sabihin, maglalagay tayo dito ng tensile force. Kailangan niyang batakin to. So, I will name this as my force P. So, sa pagkakabatak niyang yan, so, babalik siya ulit dito sa kanyang initial position. So, ito, magkakaroon ka ng axial deformation. Nagigat sa siguro ang gagawin, no? So that will be denoted by as delta P. Whereas, as based do sa figure natin, 
Anong equation na mabubuo dyan sa dalawang yan? So, di ba yan ay magiging delta T is equals dun sa deformation due to the load P. The actual deformation. So, ito is for case 1. Okay, so knowing that, we all know that delta T, so ito, ang palatandaan namin dito is si alpalat. So, deformation due to the temperature. Alpha multiplied by L multiplied by change in temperature. Saan yung change in temperature? So, siya ay final temperature minus initial temperature. Okay, okay, okay. So, ilagay na lang natin. So, 11.7 times 10 the negative 6 multiply by yung length ng ating steel rod which is 0.5 meter. Gawin na natin 2,500. So, anonvert ko siya to mm ha. Kaya naging 2,500. Alpha L delta T. Yung so, delta T natin, naging ano siya, drop in temperature. Okay? So, ang gawin natin, so negative 20, and then minus initial temperature na 20. So, kung mapapansin nyo guys, ito ay magiging negative 40. So, that means nagkaroon ka ng contraction. But, ang gawin na lang natin, just take the absolute value of that. Para makuha natin yung hinahanap sa problems. Ang hinahanap dito, the stress develop. Okay, so that is equals sa... So that will be the deformation due to the actual load P. So ano nga yung formula ulit natin dito? So that is PL all over AE. So diba, deformation due to the load P is PL all over AE. But yung P over A can be written also as the actual stress. So therefore... Sulat na nga lang natin. So, P, L, all over, A, E. Sabi ko nga, kung saan ito, so that is just equals lang sa stress. So, if you copy this part of the equation, so ibaba lang natin, is equal to stress, multiply by the length, so that is 2,500, so pareho lang naman sila ng length, over, the modulus of elasticity na 200 gigapascal or 200 times 10 to the 3 mega pascal. So, with that, what will be the value of your stress dun sa ating steel rod? So, gamitan lang natin ng calq. So, that is just equals to 11.7 times 10 to the negative 6 times 2,500 times 40 and then multiply by 200 times 10 to the 3 divided by 2,500 so pwede pala ikinansal na lang natin yung length ano? so the answer will be 93.6 mega pascal Okay, so ano yung sunod na case natin for case number 2? So ito yung final answer natin ha. Ayan. So for case number 2, so gamitin ko na lang din itong same diagram na to. Ano, so we have here the initial position. Okay, so pawiin ko lang. Okay, so again, if you apply the temperature, the change in temperature, ganun pa rin naman, magko-contract or i-equate yung iyong steel rod. But, upon the application of this actual force P, ang sabi kasi, yung wall mo magi-yield. When we say yield, lalapit siya at a distance of, in-specify naman dyan kung ano yung distance na ilalapit niya. So, sabi, so, yung wall mo lumapit ng 0.5 mm, meaning itong initial position mo to, mababago. Ang mangyayari dyan, lalapit ka ng 0.5 mm. So, palitan ko lang ng kulay ito. So, gawin nating pula. 
So ito yung magiging bago mong initial position. Sige. I-exage natin ng konti. So this will be your new initial position. Kasi nga ang goal mo lumapit. Nag-yield ng sinabi dyan, ito daw ay equal sa 0.5 mm. So ibig sabihin, yung deformation mo due to the load P is hanggang saan na lang. So hanggang dito na lang. Okay? So that will be your delta P. So if you're going to write the equation for number 2, ang mabubuo nating equation para sa kanya ay ganito. So, isulat ko dito ang number 2. So, the deformation or the delta T is just equals dun sa deformation due to the axial load P plus 0.5 mm. Okay, so again, delta T, that is just equals to alpha lat. So, we have alpha na 11.7 times 10 to the negative 6 multiplied by the length of the steel rod which is equal to 2500 mm and then the delta T again just take the absolute value so that will be 40 is equals to so gamitin natin to na so yung stress supply so eh, or stress o oh, sigma multiplied by L which is equal to 2500 over the area Ah, sorry, over 200 gigapascal or 200 times 10 to the 3 mega pascal. And then plus 0 0.5 mm. Okay guys, by analysis alone. So, isipin nyo, yung wall mo kasi lumapit na siya. So, yung stress mo ba is mag increase siya or mas mababang value yung mapapalabas natin? So, imagine lumapit na yung wall. Siya na yung nag-adjust para sa'yo. So, kung lumapit yan, therefore, mas mababang value ng stress yung madidevelop. Okay, check natin kung totoo ba yung sinasabi ko. So, to solve for stress, so gamitin natin yung calculate natin. So, that will be 11.7 times 10 to the negative 6 times 2,500 times 40 and then transpose mo sa abila that will be minus 0 0.5 then equals so times 200 times 10 to the 3 and then divided by 2500 so we will arrive at an answer of so 53.6 so tama mas nag decrease yung stress na na develop Okay guys, so this is our final answer. So for case number 1, we have 93.6. And for case number 2, we have 53.6 megapascal. So let's proceed with the next problem.